Welcome to U2 Spain, broadcasting live on YouTube. On today's show, I'll be asking our very good friend, Chris from Upsticks, all about the latest updates on the non-lucrative visa for spring 2024. We've got loads to tell you today. Join in on the live chat, or if you're watching the video back afterwards, in the comments below. There will be loads of handy information and lively chat for you from beginning to end, so stick around for the whole thing. You're all welcome to U2 Spain. Still alive! And everybody, don't forget, let's dance! Groovy, baby. Right then, just before we get chatting, don't forget to sign up for free to the monthly newsletter, u2spain.com's website. That is um, That comes out on the first of every month. So, and also a very quick mention to our lovely friends at Smart Currency Exchange, whom I highly recommend for when you're moving or buying a house here. Use the link below to get in touch with them. Make sure you use that link because uh, you get a free account with no obligation. It doesn't cost a penny and using the link helps you to Spain out too. It is, as always, a win-win-win with a cherry on top. Oh yes. Now, without further ado, let's meet our wonderful guest for today, who is live from Almeria this morning. It's our roving reporter, Chris from Upsticks. Hello, matey. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Well, it sounds like you've got some uh, some lovely noise of people playing in the background there. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can show you where. where can you see that? I'm on the gimbal. That's oh, the hotel. Very nice. So we're in um, Roquetas de Mar. Uh -huh. um, for my daughter's got a gymnastics uh, Andalusian tournament thing. So people yeah. can all over Andalusia in this hotel, uh, mainly kids and parents uh, coming for the tournament. We start oh, Saturday. Yes. Oh, wish a look from me. It's the first one. We're all excited. Very excited. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, once again, everyone, this show is also being streamed on on Upstick's YouTube channel. So if you've got another device, watch it on there too. So Chris benefits from the watch hours as well. And do subscribe to that channel. I notice we've got a few people who are paired up this morning with both channels on the live chat. So, um, here we go. Let's do I some shout outs. The live chat today. Yeah, you can't. So I'll, read, I'll read them all out to you in a minute when we say yeah. hello. To, have you got any shout outs apart from that? Uh, yeah, I know it's, uh, like there's one from Sarah Clark who got a TIE card and she's very excited and we've been there. I just saw that come through yesterday when I was traveling, so I just wanted to say congratulations to them. We had quite a long journey together uh, since we first met. Um, and uh, so now that's, they're happy here living in Spain. We've got a couple through Edinburgh, but to be honest, I was actually traveling and I haven't managed to open the email yet, so we'll give them a shout out when it shows them. Brilliant. Oh, that's good. Well, congratulations to everybody whose um, residency has come through or your visas have come through this morning. And uh, let's say hello to everybody on the live chat. Yogi's here. Yeah, everybody wave to Yogi and give him a and say hello. You can chat to each other on the live chat. I'm, I'm sure you know that already. And uh, Jason from Jason's Web and Robbo is there. He says it's getting up to 20 degrees today in Mortlake uh, in London area. And I have just three weeks until I'm my early retirement. Oh, yes. But you're looking forward to that. And um, Yogi says, good to see you again. And he's, he's at the gym listening to the video while exercising. There you go. Keep it up. Keep it up. And Paul Cook is there. He says, good morning. And uh, Yogi's put, oh, thank you for the donation, Yogi. That's lovely. And he's also put a baby lemon jumping in a lemon character's arms to hug him. There we go. That's one of those where the, uh, uh, the emoji doesn't show up. Still alive, he says, and uh, Ant and Kez are there. Hola y buenos días a todos. And Andy Cooper, morning, uh, 10 days to go before we head over. Brilliant. And uh, Jason's web, 25 days until my trip. Steffi says, good morning, and uh, hashtag FOF. Everybody say, feck off, Freddy. And 
and says, nice tree-lined spot you found, Chris. Yeah, it's a very small, it's a very, actually, it's a very small balcony. I was going to go down the bottom because I thought there'd be a bit more people walking around, but it's really windy. Yeah. So um, it was a bit... So you're a bit more so sheltered there. there. No, that's good. Uh, yeah. So and Maria. Made it. Maria Pye says, good morning. And uh, Kev the Argonaut says, good morning, chaps. And I'll be answering your comment on the video after the show, Kev. Sorry, I didn't get around to it this morning. So, I, have we got any other news apart from um, what else we're going to be talking about? Any other updates? Apart from the updates, we have got one that we discussed it when we were together last week, and I haven't managed to put too much research into it, so I think we're going to uh, do a, a, a bit more content on it, aren't we? Which was this uh, public... Um, so, basically, in Spain, uh, when there's something put forward to the government before it goes out for a public opinion and it's published uh, under an official document. And there's recently mm. been one published about the whole process of immigration. Um, and that is put in, it's basically put forward questions regarding the uh, actual amount of processes which are available and simplifying mm. them and also simplifying the process of actually going through uh, the visa and getting with us in Spain. So, um, still got a lot to do, a lot more research on it. I actually saw this morning there's been an update as well. So uh, once we know more about that, we'll get it on. But nobody seems to be talking about this uh, this new public questioning of the whole system. And I think it could be very exciting. Yeah. OK, yes. Yeah. We'll definitely do something about that. There was something on uh, um, Rochelle's site this morning all about uh, driving licences. They're changing the rules for, for, I think it is over 65s. They're now allowing the license to be renewed for a longer period but the oh, testing really? the medical testing is going to be slightly more uh, uh harsh so so that they can check because um uh, i think up until now the rule at the moment is that they've um if there's something medically slightly wrong with you you can lose you lose the license but uh, yeah. they say that's unfair to people over 65 you know when when you can just get a medical uh, note to say yes he's okay from a doctor which is i think what they're going to do instead of you going into one of the test centers and just getting the normal uh, eyesight test that you get they're going to get the doctor to give you a proper uh, medical opinion on it as to whether you're okay to drive so yeah that's something i read this morning yeah because they did once you hit that age i thought it was 70 but when you hit 70, they can give you your medical for up to five years. Mm -hmm. They can, if the person decides that they only want to give you a year, they can just give you a year, which is really, then you've got to go through the whole renewing your license again in a year's yeah. time if they feel that you're not the only suitable to drive for a year, which I never fully understood that, how they could tell that on one test, really. Mm. And, and, and that test is a bit farcical, isn't it, these easy driving license. So, uh, yeah, well, I, Liz and I went in, back to back and uh, she didn't have to do that thing where you go on the machine she just did the questions in the first half of the van and then she was just waved through and waved out the door and that was all done but when I went in I I was said you know they said right next uh, next area maybe it was because I put my put some glasses on to read the, something he was showing me uh, but no I, th I thought everybody had to do it well, so did I thought that, and then as we were with everybody I know supported back, we've done it. I've always done it. I did it when my, my first exchange in 2000, and then I've done it subsequently for two renewals. And then I was with um, Terry and Jenny, who watch the channel as well, actually. I don't know if they're watching today, and they're doing, they've got their, uh, their both of their residences now, and they're doing their driving license, and they came into us to stop the doc documents off, and they said, no, they literally went in, did a hearing test, uh, but asked a few questions. So it was comical because there's a hearing booth and they didn't even shut the door. <laughs> it's just yeah. silent room. Um, I didn't and, do a hearing um, test. They did a they did a visual test. They had a, a card held up and asked me to read something, but no hearing. Yeah, booth. we never did the reactionary test. And then when they asked why, they went, "Oh no, because it's an exchange." I'm going. I'm sure you still have to have your full medical to get the certificate. And they told yeah. him it was because it was an exchange. You didn't need it. And I was like, "Okay." I know everybody works differently, but yeah. yeah. Wow. Strange. That's the, it's the it, same old it, story, it is isn't it? Better. If, if, if people are over 65 are perfectly healthy, 
then why shouldn't they get a 10 year card you know? yeah absolutely so there we go i look forward to seeing the full information all about that so it's time for the spring update then looks like there's quite a lot going on so um let's start with bls in the uk which for those of you not familiar with visas it's where you go for your visa appointments since they took over from the spanish consulates in edinburgh and manchester in london so how are they getting on with the job now chris they're doing really well look you know it was like everything when it first came into play um it was it, it really it was a lot of uncertainty you know the first people the pioneers who went to the bls office you know there wasn't any sort of checklists and the, the individual offices were seeming to work differently. They didn't know whether they were sending passports back, keeping them or whatever. But that seems to have all calmed down now. And uh, I have to say that apart from, um, which uh, Kev sent me a, a very comical email yesterday, I think he called it the most horrific IT experience he's ever had. <laughs> trying to book an appointment. Yeah. Uh, on their website, they have more security uh, um protocols on the website than, than ever to actually get an appointment booked um, but apart from that they're actually working really well um, you know when you go to your appointment uh, apart from a couple of incidents where London was very 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 busy and people have to wait an hour 90% of our people have been seen on time um, mm -hmm. they're very functional in the way that they take the documents from you and uh, they are detaining passports there's a lot of mystery about whether people whether people are getting their passports back or not. Well our experience is that they do retain the passports um, and they make you sign a document giving the address so they can courier them back to you. You evidently get charged for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then but the people are getting their text messages to say that the documents have been processed the very next day, which is as they promised they do. And mm -hmm. the visas are coming out in good time at the moment so uh albeit it's been a little bit of a rocky road to start this this first spring the spring update that we're giving you it's been really really good since january brilliant uh, any differences in what's going on in in the, the different offices in edinburgh manchester and london uh no so they've sort of regulated now the, the system is more or less the same in all of them now whereas before it was slightly different um what has happened is that they've all started to take digital photographs of people um, what we've got to remember is that BLS is a business. Okay, mm -hmm. so before where we were going straight to a Spanish administration office, you know, overseas, uh, albeit the consulate, uh, you were dealing with a with a government employee. Now you're dealing with an employee, so, and they need to get those appointments out. You know, 15 minutes. They need to be as efficient as possible. Make sure that your paperwork is correct. That there's no problem. Um, and then they can earn their money down for the next appointment. You know? mm -hmm. So with that in mind, what they've done is they've implemented um, this photograph system where they actually take a digital photograph of you. They do charge you a tenner for the, for the pleasure of that photograph. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it doesn't always work. So at the moment, our advice is still take a passport photo with you in case that system isn't working. Because that thing you do is turn up and not have as a photo uh, but in terms of are they any much difference not anymore no they're both all of them are retaining the passports um in terms of the turnaround times london's by, by, by far the quickest i believe that relates more to the consulate than the actual bls office manchester's mm -hmm. the slowest and edinburgh sits there in the middle which just recently has been out in edinburgh in four weeks london the quickest i think is around seven days and mm -hmm. um uh, manchester's between four to six weeks at the moment some take eight. Right. Is there is there any chance of asking to have your passport given back to you if you need to uh, you know if you've got a trip planned to you know if you buy yes, a house for you, example? Uh, the um the, the way the BLS uh, office word it basically and this is how they explained it to us was that you can request your passport back directly from the consulate and prove to them why you need it. If it's an emergency situation or something like that. At the moment, as I say, our experience is that every single passport across all, every single fearless office is retaining the passports at the moment when people go to their appointments. Um, and if you want it back, you have to request it from your consulate and not then. But I would like to hear about anybody else's experience, to be honest, because you know, we can only speak about our own. But that is, you've got to be prepared that you're going to uh, have your passport removed from, from you at that point. Mm hmm. 
Good to know. And uh, double up on your devices. He's just done that. He's paired up with your channel. Thanks for that. And and uh, don't forget, thumbs up, y'all. Yes, make sure you click on the thumbs up on the like button, everybody, because uh, we know you're all there, but and we know you all like it. So just click that button. It takes nothing to do that. Jason's asking, is there a list of BLS officers? I think have you got a list on your website. You, you've got a, a news got item? Them on our website, and uh, I've got them. We've got them somewhere. I'll find them. Yeah, there's. You've got three. Okay. Well, unless you're going to Ireland, then um, you've got three in the UK. So you've got London, Manchester, and Edinburgh, which um, cover the same areas that the consulate basically covers. There's no difference at all between the 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 regional areas which are covered by each consulate yeah. um, and then in Ireland you've got Dublin as well now um, we helped uh, again somebody watching the channel uh, we're helping Mike with his stage two we didn't have him with stage one we've never done a, a visa through Dublin yet and mm -hmm. um, it was great to get a debrief from him but apparently that's working well as well there's some uh, people with British passports looking at Irish ones and they're going to an LV there mm-hmm Great. I think I've got a, I'm sure I did a video with all of the officers on it, but if I didn't, then maybe I should. I'm just going to make a note of that. BLS video. I think you did the consulate. I, I definitely did one on the consulates and it's on my website, um, but I'm not sure if I've updated it yet. I'll get round to that. I've not been doing much, uh, many blogs on my website recently because of, well, it's because of my health really. And uh, I've just not had the time to do it, but I'm going to get down to that very soon and catch up because I've got I've got all of the you know all of the notes for the blogs all ready to go on based on a lot of the videos I've done so anyway I promise to do that yeah. um, oh Kev says yes 48 years in the business and that's definitely the worst IT system I've ever seen mate it's like a round the world trip in an EV <laughs> yeah that'd be tough yeah, it was. It's, it's, it's sometimes I jump on a screen sharing platform um, with uh, with people to, to go through it because you have to be the other side of the camera to um, verify yourself. They take a verifying photo, so you go through the, the booking process. Takes you through this sort of ridiculous fill out this form, etc., etc., etc. Then you get to a point where you have to upload a photo. Now, what I found, and it's a good tip for everybody, is that PNG works a lot better than JPEG with these photos. Um, but they have to be smaller than 200 uh, KBs, kilobytes, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then they do a photo verification. And everybody stands there like this, really, really still. And then it says, not verified. So you have to wobble your head a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's and the opposite of what you should do with a picture. And people with, with, who maybe uh, uh, haven't got a lot of hair on top, you can't sit under a big light. Because it doesn't recognise your photo, so you've got to sort of have light coming from the sides. It's crazy. It does work, um, yeah. but it's um, and then you, that puts you onto another bit, a very another important bit of information to get out there is now you have to make the DLS payment before they'll confirm your appointment. Whereas uh -huh. that wasn't the case before, you made that there. Make sure you take that receipt so you don't get charged twice. So far, so good. Since they brought that system in, people are getting it discounted off their final. Uh, so that's the it. so that's the BLS fee rather than the visa fee. Yeah, 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 yeah. the fourteen pound fee that they charge you for the actual appointment itself is actually paid yeah. up front now. We'll come to the total uh, amounts of fees and and the yeah. split of, of what everything is in a minute. But let's answer Robbo. You just needed confirmation. Did you say London BLS is a seven day turnaround on visas? Just run through that list of turnarounds on the the different BLSs. I said minimum, it, the, the, the quickest one we've had through London was seven days. Um, uh, Ken's brother, actually, he might correct me if that was six or eight, but I know it was around seven. Um, mm -hmm. And the norm is around a month for uh, London at the moment. Yeah. And uh, Edinburgh and Manchester again? Uh, Edinburgh, we got through uh, one yesterday, which was a month. So that was great. They seem to be bringing their turnaround times uh, round. And also, Edinburgh last year, one of our clients, um, they really pulled it out of the bag because they had to separate their application times due to the P45 requirements and then finishing work, and the time didn't work. And uh, the, um, the, the wife of the couple who, who applied, um, 
really she was in dire straits because it's not it wasn't quite fair that she had to apply afterwards and they we went with a letter and they turned it around so quick you know a week for us so they are compassionate like that and that would be a lesson as well um and manchester's slightly longer manchester's around four to six weeks we've seen them at eight weeks as well okay but i mean when you look at the videos that we've done before where we're talking two to four months you're lucky i mean uh-huh. And now it's what's the spring 2024. I mean, if you'd have said that you know eight weeks is a long time to wait for a visa two two years ago, you'd all been jumping for joy. Yeah, you know. that is good to know. So they're they're doing a lot right then, apart from their website. <laughs> apart from the website, yeah, the website's shocking. The website's absolutely horrific. But um, apart from that, um, yeah, and just on booking the appointments as well. Some people have had problems with booking uh, family appointments. You can actually book one with the main app add your app, uh, spouse onto that appointment um, but at the right at the beginning it's not letting you give that option that it hasn't done this week to add how many family members on that front um, people just been looking two individual ones and then saying that and telling them they're together in advance. okay and when they when you book them together when it does allow you to do that do you you both go in together or you know the whole family going together or is it like yeah. separate times one after the other you go for in together yeah. yeah, and is it just a longer appointment? No, no, it's the same time actually. They, they oh, okay, and they you, know so you just you have the the kind of one set of documents. No, you have two. So when you go in together as a joint application, you go with um, they go with uh, your two folders separately prepared. It's always going to be separately prepared. You can't go with like one copy of passport, one copy of passport, one medical certificate, one medical certificate. You've always got to go. As um, separately prepared, mm-hmm. in two separate folders. We always send our clients. We always send them a folder each, and then the list. Um, and what we do is we put the official list from each uh, BLS office in that folder, and that's the order we've got to go in. We go to the Great. Kev says yes. It was seven working days for him. Uh, John's documentation issue was fixed, and the visa issued two days later. Amazing. Good to know. Lots of that. That's one of my catchphrases. It's a new catchphrase. Good to know. I think I've been saying it for so long. Should get the t-shirts. Let's talk about the fees then, because this is uh, something that you didn't pay at the consulate was this the service fee, but BLS have kind of added that on the on the top of the 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 total fees, haven't they? That's right. So now the it's jumped up quite a bit from last year. So if you remember last year. The uh, the um, consulate was it's around five hundred twenty five pounds for the consulate, which you only paid them for their service, and they also BLS were involved. Um, and the consulate would allow you to take a uh, return uh, envelope to get your passport returned back to your BLS prefer that you pay their courier service. Um, mm. Albeit, I did actually have a client uh, in London uh, two weeks ago who took the self-address envelope, now happy to accept it. Um, moving forward, we just need to advise people, unfortunately, just pay DLS for that fair system. That's not going to It's better to do so. Um, but yeah, but now it's more expensive. Now it's around 566, I believe, for the whole Five, application. 576.85 is what you sent me. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I, I sent it. I haven't got anything in front of me. Sorry. Oh, you've got it all there, haven't you? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what then. I'll, I'll run through the list you sent me that uh, you kindly researched anyway. So, BLS service yeah. fee. Fourteen pounds fifty-five, and the courier their next day courier service twenty-four ninety-five, and the photography service that you mentioned earlier that's a tenner, and then the SMS service so that's to get a text back a confirmation text one ninety-five, and then the visa fee is five hundred and twenty-five forty, so again that's a total of five hundred and seventy-six eighty-five. There you yeah, go. That's, uh... Yes, I mean, the SMS, the photo and the courier fee is, you know, just one of those, you know, it's a bit of a bit off, you know, the mm-hmm. SMS is, is terrible. Uh, but they've got to make the money, I suppose, be less than my other, you know. Yeah, I don't know if that's a charge that that their, uh, the mobile provider is charging them anyway, or whether it's just, like you say, a money-making scheme. No, they're not getting charged that, are they? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and the WhatsApp, it's free. 
No, but Jake's society, they're not getting charged that, and they're certainly not costing them a ten or two a digital photo, but no. it's just how they make their money. So they'd be 20, they're 14, 55, the tenor, 24, plus this and that, now 18 quid a, 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 for the 15 minute appointment, basically, that's probably what they're making. So. Yeah. That, if you add that up over the day, how many appointments do they go through in a day? That's going to be... Oh, one, one thing to mention is, just while we're on the subject of uh, the differences, London actually offer a walking service as well. You don't have oh. to have um, a, uh, an appointment, but I wouldn't suggest that you did that, um, but you don't have to have an appointment um, but if there's obviously no space to live Yeah. Also good to know. There. Yeah. Robbo is asking, are all documents sent back from BLS or is it just the stamped passport? It's just the passport, just isn't the it? Just the passport, just the passport, yeah. In theory, they should just only keep copies, but recently uh, they have been keeping original medical certificates and macros. That said, you don't need them for anything else once you've got your visa anyway. Excellent. And uh, Kev the Argonaut is just donated some money on the super chat thanks very much he says scats a couple of quid to buy freddie a one-way ticket the hell out of here f hashtag fof thanks very much cab cab that's very kind of you if anybody else wants to donate that would also be wonderful to support uh, me and the show you can also hover over the the gofundme here and uh, donate to the cancer fund <laughs> um because I'm not able to do a lot of the work that I would normally do for the whole of this year. So any donations would be kindly accepted because I need to pay the rent. Thanks very much. <laughs> I don't like asking. It sounds uh, just sounds wrong to me, but I'm going to do it anyway. And the middle journey says I found it interesting that if you own your home in Spain, it's taken into consideration, meaning the non lucrative visa requires less money to support the visa. Is that true on the on the visa? I know it's, uh, in some areas well, it, it's true for the uh, the renewal. Yeah, both for, for renewal and initial application. Yes, the problem is is they don't give us the uh, true credit percentage of the value of the property, but they allocate to the e-frame. So we never know. So yeah. we've had a couple of cases on renewal where, and always on renewal, when someone's got a property, where we submit a notice simply to prove they're the current owner of the property. And quite often, what we'll do is we'll prepare a document which. The whole deed is quite a hefty document, but you'll see the first few pages of the deed will show what the purchase price and shows what the, the value of the property is. And a notice simply is an up-to-date land registry document which proves you're still the current owner. So those two merge together, prove how much the property's worth and that you still own it. But the problem is, is we don't get given um, the percentage of the that it, uh, that it But they're it, taking it into account, into account. yeah. So, you know, we always advise the best of the cash anyway, or the passive income. But, um, but yeah, yeah. The properties are definitely when you've got a property, you need to mention that on the application, both initially and in the Good stuff. Oh, Rochelle's on the live chat. Good morning, Rochelle. Not seen you on the live chat for a bit, but uh, it's lovely. I actually mentioned you earlier talking about something that you've put on Ask Rochelle and Luthia all about the driving licenses, the differences in uh, age restrictions i babbled my way through it because i because my i've got brain made of toffee at the moment so uh, uh if anybody wants to know about that then have a look it up on ask rochelle andalusia the group uh, the facebook group that is and there we go expat333 says my nlv is valid for 110 days surprisingly oh does this take precedent over the normal three months time frame chris is helping with the spanish end of my application yeah funnily enough um it's uh, we've got a few visas that have come through with a hundred day validity on them um which basically means that's that's the time that you've got to get into the country and make sure you've got an entry stamp um during that time you know, to get an entry stamp after that the visa's not valid so uh, yeah but we've had a few which come over over the 90 days uh period hmm that's interesting. Why are they doing that? Because I thought it was a that's a fixed yeah. rule. Uh, so some, I didn't know that expat three 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 was one hundred and ten, but we've had a few of a hundred days, which is strange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And oh, Rochelle says there's there's more news about the driving license exchanges and the DGT 
and do we want to know yeah by all means put that in the live chat or um, or put it in the comments below the video maybe so that people watching afterwards can get it too that would be a good thing and and maybe the best thing to do is to get you on the show at some point and and you can run through it then as well which would be lovely a driving license update would be really good on the show yeah good stuff and uh, we've already talked about the turnaround times that was going to be my next question shall we go to the the mid-show break i think we should because you need to get off to the uh, to the uh, sports event for yeah, for I your daughter then i'll be good if they had to get the parents up as well <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. brilliant okay then so let's go to the special message from me and the voices in my head, my alter egos, about the wonderful things available to you as U2 Spain fans. So, take it away. Are you getting the most out of U2 Spain? I don't know! Did you know that apart from these Saturday morning live shows with expert guests or expats with really exciting stories to tell, it's like the Graham Norton Show. Bah! There are videos every Wednesday evening packed with all the information you need so we can move to Spain and enjoy living here without paying tax. No, Colonel, that's illegal. But you can find out how to navigate the bureaucracy successfully. Well said, Walter. How do I find the videos? Just subscribe to the YouTube channel, darling. And click on the bell, you useless Colonel. There's a playlist here called Video Diaries. Ooh, now that is Scats' personal story about life in Spain. And his battle with cancer. Still alive! Hashtag FOF. You can support him too. He needs you, my darlings. The poor bugger can't even stand up. If he was a horse, I'd shoot him. Colonel! He's not a very nice man. It's all right. He's just a two-dimensional stereotype. Aren't we all, sweetie? I'm not. Brexit! Moving on! How do I support scats? Use the QR code in the corner. Or there's a link in the video description below. I think he's worth every penny, but I can't find the link anywhere. In the video description, you idiot. I've warned you, Colonel. I'll send you back to the nunnery. While you're watching or pausing, below the video you'll see the title, just here. Oh, I see it. It says, read more. That's right. Just click or tap on that and lots. Oh, <laughs> something went wrong. We're back straight away. It's never done that before. Sorry about that, everyone. Yes, if you can't find the, um, the links below to all of that information, then... I'll uh, let me know in the in the comments. You can find the comments, can't you? And I'll describe it to you. Well, I'm glad I was back in my chair. I went and bashed my guitar on the way out of the door. <laughs> I made a right racket. Uh, talking about guitar, watch the watch the update the my um, Friday video diary. There's a song on there, everybody. And it's the second time I've done the uh, song on one of those. But this is a song I wrote back in about. 2012 all about my English teacher and uh, it's a big inspiration so yeah make sure you watch that video so we've not had any questions on Facebook that I've noticed up until this morning so let's just check out in the live chat oh yes Rochelle's putting some stuff up in the on the live chat there, some officers have started using digital certificates to access the appointment system. Oh, that's interesting. Almeria, Malaga and Seville so far, it's a pain. There is no option to set as someone's representative. Ah, that is a problem. This is, this is the same as the, uh, so the, um, well, we're going to talk about stage two, weren't we, about doing this, this fingerprint, what we call the Tom of the Way uh, Oh, yeah. That's already, that's already come into play for Almeria. You have to use your digital certificate um, to book an appointment. It does give you the option to book one for somebody else, and it makes the right mess of the book if you can to when you take it out. So, uh, yeah, but they're, uh, I didn't know that about the DGT, but it looks like they're all going that way. Yeah. And she says, for, the, for those provinces, there are no separate 
Tramite office, uh, officinas for British licences anymore all have to go through can, canje, whether EU or non-EU. Ah, that's going to make it difficult for the for the UK ones. There. Um, yeah. And Michelle says yes for yes for TIE you can act as representative. Not so on DGT website. There tricky well hopefully they'll sort that one out so let's go to stage two of the process then the renewals so uh, no not renewals sorry the the residency appointment when you get to spain what's the latest from the foreigners officers that you've heard so we have a bit of a um a, a switch around from last year to this year regarding the timing so last year what would happen would be that the visa would take and years before previously the visa would take an awful lot of time to come through and then when people came to Spain, you could get the appointments quite regularly to get them registered. Um, now what's happening is the BLS offices are pretty efficient. The visas are coming through. But when people get to Spain, there's a, there's a two-month wait to get your appointment to register it. But a lot of the time, depending on people's circumstances, you can't put the appointment until they've got the visa because you don't know when they're going to be coming over and stuff like that. So um, what's happened is here, I mean, there's been a, a pretty much a collapse in the in the, what they call the fingerprint appointments. Um, Malaga, um, albeit um, is one of the best provinces, they're still running in now in June with the book. So um, you get the odd cancellation. Almeria is just a disaster at the moment. As I say, they've put onto a digital certificate platform, but even using that uh, platform, it's really hard to get appointments. It's just we go on it 20 times a day, and sometimes it will kick up, oh, yes, I'm in, and then it'll just kick you out, and it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, places like Ali Kanti, you just have to be aware of when the open times are for the various offices for the appointments. So if you know that, you can get them. But what they do in Ali Kanti is different to some some of the offices if they don't give you a choice. Uh, some offices bring up a calendar and others only give you a choice of three appointments. And when you go and do that and you're trying to book for a couple, for example, when you go to the back in the second time, they're never giving the same date. So people are finding that it's on different days. Mm. Um, so it is happening, the stage two, very well, but patience is a virtue. And also, if you do get an appointment booked in or whoever's working on your behalf gets you an appointment, it's really important that you make the effort to go to that appointment because it's so hard to cancel it and then get another one. Mm -hmm. Is Almeria the most difficult place to get appointments still? By far. By far, it's an absolute nightmare. I was in Ejido on Wednesday, um, and uh, with clients also, every watch if we cannot, and if we've got them this morning, hope not, they'll probably be swearing a lot in the comments about the person that we got behind the desk. But <laughs> it was horrific. It's good, like going back in the old days. It was terrible. There was two waiting rooms. The police on the front door were great. They're really nice. Uh, we've got another client who's uh, ex, uh, ex police and they were like sharing war stories, you know, the, the, the policemen have been in the army before, been to Afghanistan and stuff. And he was great, they were having a great chat. But, um, you get put in this like holding area and then you move through to the other holding area. At some point, you then get taken to one single desk for foreigners there in a heater, just one. It's a nightmare. Wow. And, uh, is the most objective person. I have to say, I'm always pretty uh, positive and complimentary of the administrative staff because they do have a very hard job behind that desk. But I wouldn't of this certain individual. She was yeah. Horrible. I think you meant objectionable rather than objective. <laughs> yes, objectionable. Yeah, they, they just, everything was a problem. Everything, uh -huh. everything. It was, uh, it was just, uh, we got the job done, evidently, but... Um, but yeah, but Almeria, and they've got a fantastic office in the centre of Almeria, uh, in the Calle Marocos, it's absolutely huge. And I, I just can't understand the maths, because if they know the amount of approvals, why doesn't that match the amount of appointments to register those approvals? Surely it's simple. Hmm. OK. Any more news from uh, any of the other foreigners' offices? Any, any updates there? Uh, uh, no, I mean, apart from the fact that, um, I mean, once they are now, most of them getting used to seeing the visas. So obviously when we first got the NLVs, they were looking at them, all oh, British people, NLV, computer says no. Now, apart from, 
I experienced in Ejiba, where the lady was constantly asking me for a resolution, which you never get with Ejiba. Uh, you get the reason the passport, you don't get a bit of paper. Um, they're, they're, all, they're all working pretty well. Um, some of them, uh, most of them will require a padron for the first registration. Some of them, including the Malaga and one in Alicante, most of the time, if you haven't got a padron for your first registration, they'll let you get away with it. But it's always advisable, if possible, Thank you for that one. Great to know. Uh, Richelle's put up a, a tip for Castellon, where it's impossible to get a TIE appointment for. She says go to Reus in Tarragona instead uh, for an appointment after 1500 hours, they will process them. That's a good hint. Thanks very much for that. Can, can you go to Tarragona if you live in Castellon then? Richelle, it's a different problem. Good question. There we go. We'll wait for an answer for that while we have Kev's comment. When we get our passports back from the consulate with a visa, does that remove the 9180 requirement immediately or only when registered in Spain? When you, so, you, you, so, yeah, basically, yeah, well, it does in terms of entering the country and then your residency starts with your entry stamp once you've registered. So, say, for example, you enter the you, if you're over, over, if you're at the limit of your 90 and 80 and can't get back into Spain, which you've got the visa that allows you to move to Spain, and then yes, basically it does override it because you can stay for the period of your visa, but you've got to register that visa once in Spain to kick off the temporary residency period. Um, and that kickoff period, that kickoff date, is the date that you enter that entry stamp. Now, what is very important is that because of the situation with the appointments, that some people's visas are actually expiring while they're in the country, but they've got that entry stamp and they've got the appointment booked, ready to go and register that visa, that's fine, but you can't leave the country until you've had that appointment. Okay, so uh, to answer Yogi's question earlier, so with the 100 day entry requirement, can you then come back out with no form of penalty? Yes, you'd be able to come out with being your. With, that's the Schengen Mortuary Entry Visa, so yeah. Right, stuff. Oh, expat333 said, visited Competer yesterday. Yay! Uh, and nobody warned me that I may need to lie down after the coach journey up there. Yes, uh, but a great place anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't like to go up that road in the coach. That's uh, yeah, bad Ralph, enough Ralph, in a car. Ralph made a mess of our car when we came up to see you that time. Yeah, he didn't travel well on the going around all those bends. Um, anybody else that I've missed out? I don't want to miss out any of you here. Um, da, ba, ba, ba. Rochelle says, yes. Uh, yes, you can go to Tarragona. There you go, even though it's in the next province. Oh, really? um, she said she's had uh, five clients who have done it. They are aware of the Castellon appointment issue. Okay, so they're allowing people to do it because there's no appointments in Castellon. Good to know. We, because uh, we tried uh, Valencia with a Castellon client, and uh, we thought, well, we couldn't get the appointment, and uh, we tried. We got a good friend there, and um, we, uh, and they wouldn't let us. Oh, okay. Maybe it's limited to just that one. Okay. Maybe it's just a recent thing. Mm. Brilliant. I did my, uh, my first residency in Paragon. Nice. And Alan Nichols is saying, you're looking really well, Scats. Thank you. I, I do actually. Uh, a lot of people have been saying, I look well on it. Maybe, maybe that's what I've needed all these years to have some chemo and radiotherapy <laughs> to make me look good <laughs> yeah that's not going to happen you're is glowing, it you're glowing you're glowing <laughs> glowing yeah that's what it is i'm just radioactive <laughs> so uh david tunma Tun tunma sorry there's morning chris and scats just waiting for the apost apostille to return then we can move to the next stage bring it on yeah translation we're we're doing well, David. You've done, you've done an amazing job with your docs. We're doing well. Yes, indeed. Oh, here's an interesting question from Maria Pye. 
with with a non-lucrative visa can you still be a youtuber from the uk in spain uh, as long as you're not earning revenue from it yeah uh, yeah as long as you don't have to register as autonomo to declare your income i suppose yeah once you because uh, uh, until you've got you know a, a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours you can't even apply for for advertising revenue so but once you've applied and started receiving it then yeah you couldn't do that because it's not uh it's not passive income no, no. that's that's actually i think that's probably where the question was directed is whether any money is passive income from youtube and it's, well you, you you know um uh more because you, you more than me because you dealt with antonio with all these questions didn't you regarded having his channel and um i know of two other people actually who are going through that process now with him and um, yeah, it's not asking them to go to work to get that money, albeit it's not paid directly. Yeah, like yeah. The income that I get from previous videos is is then passive income. It becomes passive income. That's the funny one. So, from many videos that I made last year, if there's any right. advertising revenue coming from them, but it's only tiny cents percentage of a cent that's coming from them so uh, but yeah so if I was to um, take time off is this was a question that Richelle was talking about actually yeah uh, uh, when she said why why don't you why don't you take the money that's coming to you as uh, 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 as kind of uh, what is it when you take time off works so like sick pay uh, which I can get that's it yeah from the government why don't I do that if I'm entitled to it? Well, I wouldn't be able to make the videos anymore. I wouldn't be able to come on the show. Uh, and I'd have to stop the money coming, all of the advertising revenue that's coming in. And you can't split advertising revenue from before you claim the Abaca and advertising revenue that you're getting from videos that you're making now. It's it all all comes in as a payment a month after uh, a month after it comes in. So yeah it would be impossible for me to do that and it's just not worth it so there we go so i don't yeah, know how much would you get i i, I know it's about 700 uh, a month it's not very much that's what it is yeah and that wouldn't pay the rent so yes uh let's see with any other questions uh kev says Thanks, Chris. I'll be on 66 days on re-entry and my appointment in Spain isn't until 27th of May. Yeah. You like that? You've got an appointment in Spain before you've been through your visa appointment. Yeah, that's efficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. We, we, got that, we saw that come up and I, was, I, I, was, I bought that with, with the other two and I said, look, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't. But let's get it booked in anyway. And uh, it could be a triple appointment that for you guys. Yeah. That's what you did with my NIE uh, yeah. appointment as well. You booked it before I got there, which uh, <laughs> which was a fail because I, I couldn't get to the appointment then because of the car breaking down. But there you go. But the um, one in, just going on about stage two, one very important point as well, which they've changed to the Tom of the Way appointment, which is the registering of the visa, is you have to have an NIE number to get those appointments. So for people who haven't got NIE numbers, uh, you won't be able to book a some other way appointment registry visa someone who has got an nie number could potentially book that appointment in advance in anticipation of getting a visa but once you've booked your appointment you can't then look for another one and update it you would have to cancel said appointment and then book another one right so that's why it's a bit of a problem at times with the appointment right okay oops kev says it's cos I is special, mate. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, yes, that's undoubtedly true. And Rochelle says there's good people at the Reus. That's good to know as well. And uh, Maria says a non lucrative visa, can you still be? Oh no, I've, I've you've said that one already. But Yogi was saying reference the YouTube appoint an earnings piece. Would a digital nomad visa apply? I suppose suppose it would because you're you're getting earnings from a company abroad but it would take you it takes a long time to to get enough money coming in from being on YouTube 
If you're earning enough on YouTube to be able to uh, fulfil the financial requirements, then you can you can go anywhere in the world, probably. You'd have to miss the beast to get a digital nomad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd have to be, you know, and you'd have to have provable income for, you know, at least the three months, wouldn't you? And probably a lot, a lot longer. Yeah, and then how would you, that's a good question, though, it'd be something to do a shelter study, but I mean, I suppose when you look, we've monetized our channel, but we don't get an awful lot from it. We don't really use it for that, but it just progressively happens. But that one video that I got, which got 9,000 hits, um because the revenue is quite low on our subject that 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 came up at a, a nine euro revenue or something like that the night to get a hundred euros from a video you need a hundred thousand hits with revenue yeah and it depends where the where those hits are from as well you get more from more from america than you do from the uk and that's loads more than you get from india so the it's because the the advertisers pay a lot more in america to get their videos on so you get and there's loads of different factors that come into play so there's no way of knowing per hundred thousand how much you're going to get there's people who've had videos that have had a million hits and they've got virtually nothing for it you know it's a, um, just depends on a lot of things oh Rochelle's answered the question about YouTube it could be eligible eligible for the DNV but you'd have to have the income go through a limited company or similar and contract yourself good to know there's any youtube stars that qualify please let us know because we're going to get you on the show and mix some of your subscribers <laughs> <laughs> yes share subscribers we'll say <laughs> yeah share, share subscribers because you're sure you have to have half a million or a million subscribers to, to, to get that amount yeah uh, jason's talking about more criteria for digital nomad um to prove what you work as can't just apply for that and be a youtuber yes i think that's doubles up on what rochelle's saying you can't just apply for the digital nomad visa and then be a youtuber presumably yes not quite clear what you're saying there jason i, I think the pre i think what he's trying to say is that you would have to have the history there yeah of income to get the free this way as everybody asks can you get a digital nomad visa um after you've been on a, a non-lucky visa for a year which my understanding is no because you haven't been able to earn for that year uh, maybe we're child to correct me on that but we get asked that all the time but um and we both process the digital nomads but i'm sure that you have to have the uh previous proof of that your earnings has been um so if you're on an nlv it would be impossible to get a cmv at the end of that first year yeah so uh let's get on to the final stage because we're coming up to the hour rapidly renewals is there anything we need to know about those yes i mean the renewals have been going through well i mean the biggest thing i think that we've seen change with the, re with the renewals is is lately the acceptance the, the better the full acceptance of digitally produced documents so we always i did a video actually i'm going to do an update one last year uh because they get constantly um more so in in again Almeria uh and Mercia coming back and asking us for things like stamps or notarized bank statements for people who've got their their assets in the UK uh, and the good news is now um albeit we always advise it is better to have your savings and your assets coming into a Spanish bank it's easier to get the documents that you need if you're getting your pension into a Spanish bank well then we can just prove that your own income is simple um um, they are actually accepting um, being a lot more accepted of documents which are like online bank statements for example as long as you can see it is a bank statement and you provide a legal translation of it so uh, yeah it's, it's been mm. very positive with the renewals um, I have to say where they have the odd hiccup uh, in Alicante where people have multiple streams of passive income like pensions and it's quite hard to prove you could get yourself into an awful lot of translation. Um, so what I would say with the renewals is the simpler, the better. So I know it's not always possible for everybody, but they they really like to see all of your passive income going into one account and keep that account as simple as possible because remember, in the UK, you're going to have to translate every single state. 
Um, mm-hmm. But then everybody with the mules falls into the uh, the trap of the NLV, where it's quite hard to get that space to a point as well once you've got your food. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we've had an answer from Michelle there. Yes, you can switch from a non lucrative visa to a digital nomad visa. I think it's to do with, I think this is what Michelle said before, it's because, well, she says below actually, it's an accepted grey area. And that's because the UGE, which is the organisation that, uh, if people don't know, that, that you apply from within, within Spain for the digital nomad visa, uh, they're, they're not so bothered about that. It's a grey area. You mean people are coming in on the NLV and then working any way identifying the digital nomad at the end of it? Is that what you're getting at? I think so, yeah. Yeah, but they, they're not, they don't seem to be asking the question, but if you're already working and you're on the non-lucrative visa, then that doesn't make sense. They're just accepting that you've had three months worth of work come through already, you know, already, which is one of the criteria, isn't it? So yeah, grey area. It's uh, uh, Richelle saying they prefer the tax income to the illegality of working as a digital nomad under the NLV anyway. There you go. So people are to get the NLV effectively get, get C registering as self employed to get to meet the requirements of the consulate for getting three forty five from their own companies in some circumstances. Uh, and then as soon as they get that NLV structuring it differently to then qualify for the grey area. So that that's probably mm. what you're getting at there. Yeah, and she says uh, you can do it at the end of it or midway through it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, it is interesting. It is a it is a big grey area, isn't it? Maybe we should do a whole show about that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's not really our demographic of clients. When it's our demographic of clients, people uh, are not. Yeah, they they, they want to retire, don't they? Your clients. Yeah, yeah and why would you get an an NLV to then halfway through go through the nomad process? Why don't you just go through the digital nomad to stop? You can, if you can come into the country and you've got the 90 days uh, and actually apply from the country, if you're doing it half a an NLV, I suppose you're, only, you're gaining three months. An awful lot of money, isn't it? Three months. <laughs> mm. And that's good. So, mm. Yeah. Interesting area. That is, there's definitely a, a show to be done about that. It's about time we did a digital nomad visa uh, one again, Richelle. I'll I'll be in touch and we'll uh, we'll organise a date. So, anything else we need to say? That thing's that. I mean, we've got now. We're going to have this year coming up to people's second in yours, aren't we? So uh, we're already at uh, years four and five for some of our clients this year, which is can't believe how quickly that's gone. Yeah. So uh, we'll let you know how that goes. Evidently, the requirements for the for the renewal, people will be uh, the second renewal will be familiar, familiar with from the first renewal. There's nothing changed on that front at all. Um, so uh, yeah, that'd be something to be interesting to see how they're coming coming along. Yeah, good stuff. So, any more live chat questions or comments? Anybody before I tell you who's on next week's show? And while we're waiting for those to come through, oh, there's a, there's another comment from Rochelle, which I'll tell you in a second. Um, um, let me just remind you that if you have any more questions or comments after we go off the air, put them in the YouTube comments below, not on uh, uh, somebody else's expat group, because then it won't help all of the people who watch the show. Because, uh, you know, you can read your comments. You can read all of the comments of people who've been asking questions and get the answers. Um, underneath the video so put it there it's free to do and that means it's a win-win-win with a cherry on top so let's just get Rachel's comment so she says uh, you would if you're waiting for your limited uh, company to become one year old before you can qualify for the digital nomad visa ah yes that would be a that's a, an example so you yeah. Ah, it's all very complicated, isn't it? And Jason's saying, Rochelle, thank you for your advice in previous show. Plan to get the non-lucrative visa for one year and try and find employment for renewal and change to the work visa on renewal. Yes, that's 
That is possible. Good. And Kev says, thanks guys, great show. Best of health to you both. Thank you very much, Kev. That's lovely. And um, don't forget to smash that like button, everybody, and subscribe and click on the bell if you haven't already. Uh, so you'll be the first to know what's coming up each week on the live shows and the midweek videos and on my diary. Don't forget to hover over this GoFundMe as well. And so I think that is all the questions for now. And before we find out what exciting guests I have on next week's show. Yes, it's guests. There's more than one next week. Let's all say a huge thank I, you. I to just Chris. want to say, can I oh, just yeah? say, mention about the driving licenses. I was just going to do be cheeky and do a bit of promotion. With the driving licenses, if you don't want to wait for an appointment at the DPC, which is an absolute pain, we actually work together with Antonio and we do an appointless, uh, appointmentless system where all you have to do is send a document and you don't have to go to the appointment. And your driving license will be delivered to your door. And this year, this this last month, we hit 150 licenses with him. So, Brilliant, uh, yes. Celebration. So, yeah. Yeah, it is hard to get appointments at the DGC. It's a pain, I think, it depends on the system. But we do offer a service that if you don't want to, uh, don't actually want to go to the DGC, we can do it all remotely for you. Brilliant, yes. That's what I did with mine, yeah. That was yeah. That was a weight off my mind. I just didn't, because it would have taken me a lot more time than I had to uh, to sort it out myself. Yeah, so I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll give you the link to our, uh, our easy form service to do that as well. Excellent, yes, I'll pop that below the video. So, everybody say, I say a big massive thank you and give Chris a virtual hug and a kiss and we'll see you again in two weeks' time. All right? Two weeks. Bye bye for now. Bye. So, who do we have on next week's show then? It's very exciting. I have not one, not two, but three guests. Woo! And they're all they're all from the same company. It's a company called Fresh Portugal. Yes, we're going to be talking about Portugal a bit next week, and that's, we're not we're not not talking about Spain. What we're doing is this company are branching out into Spain, and we are going to be comparing moving to Spain with moving to Portugal to find out what the differences are and it's actually uh, Portugal was uh, really attractive to a lot of people for for different reasons they were um, I think it, the, the financial requirement was lower and there were tax things that were better off but some of those rules have changed in Portugal now and it's starting to even up a bit so um, We've got, I think, a tax person from Spain and a tax person from Portugal coming on the show and they're going to compare and the boss of that company is going to be on as well. And they're all lovely people. So looking forward to that. Have your questions ready or just prepare yourself for a lovely chat. And in the meantime, you can, of course, ask questions in advance on the Facebook page or the Facebook group. Thanks once again to all of you for joining us on the live chat. Lots of people saying great show and um, uh, lovely, great service, says Rochelle. I'll send my clients on to you, Chris. And uh, thanks from Mike and gracias todos hasta pronto from Andam Cares and Kevin Alford. Great show. Thanks again, Kevin Tracy. And um, Anton Cares also good luck with Al Maria. Great show as always from Robbo. Chris, I will speak to you on Tuesday. Ah, he's already gone, Robbo. I'm sure he knows. And Alicante Explorer. Oh, hello, you're there. Great show again, thanks. Kev the Argonaut, big thumbs up. And uh, bye to everybody else that's that's on there. Thanks for watching. And also thanks everybody watching the video back afterwards and leaving comments and hitting the like button and buying me a coffee.com or doing the GoFundMe thing. Um, I'll see you either on the Wednesday evening video, which is going to be part two of the video that came out last Wednesday. Looking forward to that. And then I'll see you again on the video diary next Friday, at which point I will be halfway through this first stage of the stage of the treatment. And presumably, as they tell me, the, uh, some of the uh, nasty side effects that are starting to happen to my nails and things like that. Yeah, anyway, you'll get a you'll get a show all about that on Friday or we'll see you on the Saturday morning live show at our regular time 
of nine o'clock if you're in the UK or Ireland or the Channel Islands or 10 o'clock, sorry, the Canaries, not the Channel Islands, or 10 o'clock in the morning if you're in Spain or Central Europe. It would be the Channel Islands as well. So that's all for this week. I'll stop waffling on. Somebody pass around the update cookies. Uh, peace and love, peas and fluff. Kev the Argonauts is halfway to winning. Absolutely. So now here's one final message from all of the voices in my head at U2 Spain. And that's all from me. Bye bye for now. Bye. Goodbye. Toodaloo. Peace and love. Peace and fluff. Oi oi. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. One more cosmic dance? All right then. Look mum, I'm dancing. Oh, I'm all a quiver. Let's dance. Mm -hmm.